Hey there, once again, YouTube. First off, please go check out my website if you haven't already. Uh, link is in the description box below, right under my email address. It can teach you how to find, how to access, and how to analyze seismic and GPS data. It even contains event examples from many different types of earthquakes and tremor events, so you kind of know what to look for. And also contains over a thousand plots, probably, on many different sections of my website and many different blogs on there for many different earthquake swarms and events. Also, I just finished my radio interview with 95.5 My Country. So if you want to see that, it's going to be the video right before this one on my channel. So go check that out if you want. There are a few things I want to talk about today. Let's zoom in, shall we? Let's California just real quick. Three things we're going to talk about. We're going to start off with the earthquake swarm right off the coast of Oregon, on the off the west coast of the United States. We have the Cascadia subduction zone right here. Let me turn on terrain just real quick. This is called the Blanco Fracture Zone. This is not the Cascadia Subduction Zone. This is right here. This is right where the subduction zone starts, right here. Zoom in, we see multiple earthquakes. Apparently, they are now reporting there is a 2.4 at 4.7 kilometers in depth, just right along the Cascadia Subduction Zone, but along the Blanco Fracture Zone right here. We saw nine earthquakes reported, 10 for this whole area, but nine for this area including and they all say 10 kilometers in depth exactly all of them so obviously they don't know what depths they were because that's impossible for all of them to be the exact same depth i mean that's uh, and plus they also use 10.0 kilometers in depth when they don't understand what the depth is you know so i don't know just got a shrug started with a 3.2 and then we had a 5.0 and a 5.4 and a 5.4 to 4.2s a 4.7 to 3.2 a 4.6 and then a 2.4 all the way over here. This is definitely an earthquake swarm. I cannot see any main shock, really, because there were two 5.4s. And apparently, um, multiple people did report feeling this. And notice that when you go to all the event pages of these events, I still have not seen an accurate moment tensor. I have not seen them post a moment tensor, and which is very odd. Because as you're about to see, the waveforms to these events and the frequencies associated with them very, very strange, guys, especially for a magnitude 5.4. Now, we're going to take a look at the closest seismic station to these events right here, and that's going to be Keb, Station Keb in the NC network, which resides right here, which is the closest seismic station available to, for data download to this earthquake swarm along the Blanco Fracture Zone. And you're about to see, it's pretty weird, guys. This is pretty weird for a bunch of magnitude 5s. I don't know. The frequencies are way too low. Maybe it's showing the fracture is splitting even more. I don't know. So let's go check it out in the Seismic Program Swarm. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with the most recent data stream from Keb in the NC network. No location code, so it's dash dash. Broadband vertical, so I am going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power. Okay, moving forward, we see the earthquakes right here. But notice they almost look like teleseisms, like teleseismic signatures, don't they? That's because the frequencies are extremely low. Starting out, we saw the earthquake swarm started at about, I'm going to say 1244 UTC, and they're reporting it. Let's see, let's see. 1243 UTC, which started with a 5.0, then there was a 5.4, 1252, and then at 1300, there's another 5.4. So let's go back right here. You can see here's the 5.4 right there. Going forward, going forward. Then there's the other 5.0. Whoops, whoops. The other five, I mean 5.4, excuse me, right here. You can tell there are a few tiny quakes in between, probably between magnitude 3 and magnitude 4. Keep going forward. Notice the low, low, low frequencies for a magnitude 5.4, which is odd, guys. It's That's that's pretty odd, at least in my opinion. Because this station is, I'm going to say, maybe 100, 200 miles away. So frequency should not be this low. Let's take a look at the 5.4, shall we? Look at the look at the waveforms, guys. Look at how low those dominant frequencies are. That is so strange. So what is going on with the Blanco fracture zone just west of the Cascadia subduction zone? Keep going forward. I keep skipping downwards. Jeez. Keep going forward. Looks like there's another few quakes right there. Going forward. So it definitely is some type of earthquake swarm. That's for sure. Going forward, we have a few more quakes, 1338 and 1342. 1338 and 1342, I believe that would be these two right here, 4.2 and a 4.7. Let's see here, guys. Let's go forward again. 
again, again, little tiny quake right there, very tiny, probably magnitude 3 to magnitude 4. Then we see probably another magnitude 4 right there. And then not much afterwards, not much recently, and then we see another tiny quakes right there, which I believe, oh, yep, and we see another quake right here. Again, pretty tiny, but you can definitely see it on the spectrogram, that is for sure. Queer PNS wave arrivals. So these earthquakes are very weird off the coast of Oregon, guys. What caused these events? Here, let me zoom all the way out. As much as I can. There we go. Whoops. All right. So right here basically is the whole earthquake swarm on the Blanco Fracture Zone, which they're saying contains magnitude 5.0, 5.4, and 5.4, and multiple other high magnitude 3s and magnitude 4s. So... Why are the frequencies so low? I mean, I understand the station's far away, but I don't know. I really hope they do put out some moment tensors for these events, but I don't know. Now let's move on to something else just real quick. And we also had an earthquake up in northern Kansas, north central Kansas or so. And it was a magnitude 4.5 at 3 kilometers in depth. Pretty shallow, so it is possible it was caused by fracking. They do have some large earthquakes in Kansas and in the, um, in the Midwest because of fracking, so... That does happen, guys. Let's go to the event page for this 4.5 in Kansas just real quick. Let's see here. Over a thousand people reported feeling this to USGS. See, they have a moment tensor for this earthquake. Come on. I wish they'd put a moment tensor out for the quakes off the coast of Oregon. That would be nice. At least give us some idea of what's causing the earthquake swarm. That would be nice. I don't know. Um, yeah, over a thousand people all over the state of Kansas felt this magnitude 4.5. Let's take a very quick look in the seismic program swarm, just real fast. And here we are in the seismic program swarm with the most recent seismic data taken as of 11.10 a.m. Pacific Time, June 22nd, 2019, for the closest seismic station to the magnitude 4.5 in Kansas in CBKS Station, U.S. Network, zero zero location code broadband vertical. Let's turn on a 1 hertz high pass filter since it's a broadband channel. And here it is right here, the magnitude 4.5 lasted quite a while, look these from here to here is one minute so shaking was probably really long for the people in that area so probably scared the crap out of them that's for sure check out the p wave very strange kind of an emergent p wave kind of just a little bit zooming in does not look like a fracking quake to me in my opinion fracking quakes usually have much higher frequencies and usually are much shorter uh, you know they, they don't last as long in my opinion but you never know. This is a magnitude 4.5, so you never know. And so far, it does seem there is only one aftershock right here at about 11.38 UTC, which would be about 4.38 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, yeah, this occurred in the morning, guys. This occurred in the morning, so it definitely woke a lot of people up out of their beds because a lot of people were at home sleeping at this time. So that's pretty crazy. Scrolling down right here. Let me see. I believe this is the teleseism. Here, let's turn off the filter just so we can see all the lower frequencies. Let's zoom out. Yep, this is the teleseism, I believe, from the earthquake swarm off the Cascadia subduction zone near the Blanco fracture zone. I believe that's it right there. It's at pretty much the same exact time frame. So, at least in my opinion, at least in my opinion, I don't know for sure though. Actually, why don't we check? Let's go all the way back, all the way back. Let's go back to California, go all the way up here, let's see here folks, let's see all the way down, 1243, 1252, 1300, yes, yeah, the largest earthquakes occurred before 1300 and at about 1300, let's see, see, right there, 1300, 1252, 1243, and it shouldn't take really long for the seismic waves to propagate away from the Blanco Fracture Zone all the way to the east to Kansas, so I believe what we are seeing right here are Definitely the tail seismic signatures, or I, I believe that's over a thousand miles away, right? I believe it, if it's over a thousand miles away, then it's considered a tail seismic signature. Anything really under that is considered a regional event. So let's go to the spectra plot just real quick. Log frequency, press OK. Oh yeah, dominant frequencies of this tail seismic signature between about 0 0.03 hertz and 0 0.1 hertz. Yeah, definitely a tail season, guys definitely definitely from those events so let's move on to one last thing just real quick on june 21st 2019 at 650 utc there was a magnitude 4.3 at 3.4 kilometers in depth in western france 
Look at that, just east of Nantes. Please tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Isn't that weird? Look at that. It was between Angers, Jolette, and Salmur, if I'm saying that right. In the magnitude 4.3, apparently some people did report to USGS feeling this earthquake, which is strange because USGS is basically an American-run institution, you know, because it's from the American government. Um, so I bet many, many, many more people did feel this earthquake right here. A, about 83 people reported to USGS that they felt it. There's the moment tensor for this event. Let's just take a really quick look at it in the seismic program swarm. And here we have data from the closest seismic station to this uh, magnitude 4.3 in France. The closest seismic station, CLF, in the G network, 00 location code, broadband vertical. Let's go to spectrogram. You can tell for some weird reason it does not surpass 10 hertz. I believe this station only records 10 hertz and below. But regardless, we're going to do 1 hertz high pass filter just to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. And here it is right here, the magnitude 4.3 in France. Almost looked like two earthquakes. This possibly could be the surface waves, of course. But then again, I don't know. Maybe it's a little bit deeper than they're saying. I don't know. I believe right here is the PNS wave arrival, though. That's definitely the PNS wave arrival. P, S wave arrival. Don't know what this is, though. This could be the surface waves again, like I just said, or a aftershock. Could be an aftershock from the main shock, possibly. Almost occurring at the same time. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just, I don't know for sure, guys. Check out the dominant frequencies. Oh, yeah. High frequency tectonic quake between 1.3 hertz and about 6.6 .6 hertz, but weaker frequencies go well beyond that. I bet if this station could detect frequencies beyond 10 hertz, we'd definitely see some higher frequencies, that's for sure. Well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. So, what do you think the earthquake swarm on the Blanco Fracture Zone was caused by? Please leave a comment in, uh, comment in the comment section below, please. And let me know what you think. I think it's possibly from the fracture zone possibly splitting a little bit. And why don't we go take a look, actually, in the past day. Let's take a look at ETS, episodic tremor and slip events, in the past day or two for the west coast of the United States and see what's going on. And here we are at pnsn.org slash tremor. Great tool that they have right here. Showing pretty much all ETS tremor events since about, I'm going to say, late 2009. Just in the past day, we see tremor is definitely occurring off the northeastern tip of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, down in Olympia and Tacoma down here, a little bit right here just west of Portland, in the uh, northern California, and a little bit right here in northern California as well. Usually, we see only really one spot, like let's say it would be the Olympic Peninsula and everywhere else is silent, or it'll be Portland and Salem, Oregon and everywhere else is silent. It's very interesting to see that just in the past day, just in the past day, we have seen basically the entire Cascadia subduction zone showing some type of tremor movement, and then we get that earthquake swarm off the west coast all along the Blanco Fracture Zone. Do you think they could be related? I think that's very possible. But we still are not inside a very real ETS yet. And I believe we already saw it, which was this one right here. Let's zoom in. Remember, it was about May, April. Hit the peak around May 12th, right here, and has been going down ever since. You can tell it's been going down, that is for sure. But, let's zoom in. You can tell that it's still ongoing, guys. We're still seeing a good amount of tremor. It's still definitely occurring, but I believe the ETS event is over. But then again, basically here, let's go all the way back. Let's go all data. It doesn't matter, really. There is always some type of tectonic tremor occurring, somewhere. Always. I mean, you don't need an ETS event to get tectonic tremor, guys. So, I'm just letting you guys know. I believe the strongest ETS event ever was this one right here. At least on record. From, what is that, August 28, 2012 to about October 12, 2012. It was a lot, guys. Here, let's see if we can pull it up on the map. Let's press search. Back in late 2012 was, I believe, the largest event. Got to let it load because there's a lot of data, a lot of epicenters to plot. Yep, see? And that's basically the line of the Cascadia subduction zone right there. Very interesting, guys. So that's pretty much it for right now. Again, if you want to listen to um, some of my radio interview, you can either look at it on my YouTube channel or at Monday morning, with this Monday morning in just a couple days, two days, at about, what was it, 6.40 a.m. Pacific time. 7:40 a.m. Mountain Time. You can use the 95.5 My Country Radio app, which I will try to leave a link to it in the description box below. 
if you want to hear my radio interview actually on the radio. So, but I already have it up on my YouTube channel, so you really don't have to do that. You could just, you know, but show your support to 95.5. They're a really great station. It was really fun. The, uh, the guy who interviewed me, Jeff Doc Holiday, really cool guy, really laid back. I mean, it was fun. You know, I hope to do that again. So hope you guys all have a great day. Keep an eye on it. Remember to always be prepared. Who knows what's coming for the Cascadia Subduction Zone. It's a very mysterious place. God bless, guys, and see you later.